In this video, we'll talk about inflammatory bowel disease, which is an umbrella term used to describe disorders in the intestine which involves chronic inflammation. Now, IBD could be really debilitating and sometimes it could also increase the complications and it could be fatal as well. Let's talk about the symptoms. The major symptoms of IBD includes persistent diarrhea, rectal bleeding, sometimes weight loss, abdominal pain and extreme fatigue. Let's talk about the subtypes. There are two subtypes of inflammatory bowel disease. One is known as Crohn's disease and another one is known as ulcerative colitis. The major differences between these two is in Crohn's disease, the, uh, the affected part could be any part of the GI tract. Whereas in the ulcerative colitis, the inflammation occurs selectively in the large intestine, that means the colon. Now there are even subdivisions of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. In this video, we are not going to go into that much details. Let's keep these things simple. In Crohn's disease, the inflamed areas appear in patches and that kind of that, that kind of forms a salt and paper formation with the healthy tissue. In ulcerative colitis, the inflamed, inflamed tissue is kind of like in continuum. So one continuous portion of inflamed tissue is found in ulcerative colitis. Let's talk about the risk factors of developing IBD. Major risk factors involved smoking and stress. Additional risk factors involve age. Mostly IBD develops within 30 years of age, but sometimes in rare occasions, people in 50s or 60s have also developed IBD. Races and ethnicity is an important factor. Research suggests that majorly the white race is basically um, more susceptible for IBD, but it can occur in any race. Now, if there is a family history of IBD, you are more likely to get an IBD. That means there is a strong genetic component associated with IBD, just like any other disease. Inflammatory bowel disease also has some genetic and sporadic component. That means some environmental factors and gene-related risk factors. Let's talk about the immunology and pathophysiology of inflammatory bowel disease. So in inflammatory bowel disease, the colonic lesions show excessive immune inf infiltration and that leads to tissue destruction. So the major expression of STAT3 and interleukin-17 are quite hallmark of inflammatory bowel disease. Th17 cells are one subgroup of T cells which secretes interleukin-17 and that is thought to be the most important factor or player in inflammation in the inflammatory bowel disease. Other than that, antigen presenting cells also take part in this process and several chemokines such as CCL2, CCL3 to CCL20 take part in the overall pathophysiology of inflammatory bowel disease. Now T helper cell can be subdivided into many groups such as Th1 cells which are also inflammatory in nature, Th2 cells, Th17 cells, Th uh, T follicular cells just to name, name few of them. Among them Th17 cell is the key focus in the inflammatory bowel disease. Though active research is going on, but the major association of Th17 cells in uh, bowel disease is really important. Anyway, in general, Th17 cells are associated with many autoimmune disorders. Th17 cells secretes interleukin-17 and interleukin-22. Both of them leads to inflammation in several tissues or organs. By the way, recently researchers found out that gut microbiome of uh, gut microbiome is altered in the patients with IBD, and this is a very important uh, discovery because gut microbiome can denote many things. Now, people really don't know whether gut microbiome is the causal of IBD or it is associated with IBD. Anyway, the current uh, research scenario uh, kind of points out that there is a compensatory balance of immune systems in the intestine. Whenever there is a 
balance between anti-inflammatory cytokine and pro-inflammatory cytokine goes haywire, it could increase the risk of IBD. And in IBD, it has been shown that pro-inflammatory cytokines are predominant and the anti-inflammatory cytokines and the cells that secrete anti-inflammatory cytokines are reduced. That means this balance is altered and due to the perturbation of this homeostasis, there is overall massive inflammation in the intestine. Along with that, people have noticed the change with a change in the gut microbiome composition. Many gut microbiome may additionally put some, give some contribution on this inflammation. Let's talk about the diagnosis option. When to see a doctor is the important question. If you have a persistent pain in bowel movement, if you have problems in uh, uh, whenever you are uh, doing uh, in, in terms of your stool, if you have problems, then you might see a doctor. Although inflammatory bowel disease usually is not fatal, but it should not be ignored. Sometimes it can create many complications and if it is diagnosed properly, the treatment options are better. So it is diagnosed by endoscopy or colonoscopy. Let's talk about the treatment option. Treatment option involves several medications including anti-inflammatory drug, antibiotics and immune system suppressors. The extreme conditions in involve surgery, but with a combination of medications and dietary modifications, things could get better. I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. The notes associated with this video can be found in my Facebook page. Links are in the description. There are a lot of interactive uh, flashcards and dynamic flashcards which would help in your preparation. As usual, like, share and subscribe. Please put your comment in a comment and tell me how you like these videos or not. Anyway, my, vi uh, my uh, channel needs support and you can support me via Patreon. My channel is also present in an academy which is India's biggest online learning platform using a